What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to today's video. We've got the clutch for the RX-7 FD. All sorts of cinematic, cool music in the background. Look at this sexy piece of machinery right here. So, I'm going to put this down because it's actually just a little bit heavier than I expected it to be. But that's okay. And then we'll tell you about it. So, this is Exidy's Hyper Twin Disc Clutch for the FD RX-7. We're not going to be converting the car over to a push style clutch, so this still utilizes the factory pole style throw out bearing for the FD transmission. And this is a sprung twin disc. So a twin disc clutch is a little bit overkill for the amount of horsepower that we're going to be making, but what we want is comfort and drivability on the street. So the sprung, nice, smooth engagement, the twin plates shouldn't be as grabby in addition to the twin disc being a little bit easier on your foot as far as pushing the clutch pedal down the four rotor is going to make a good bit of torque but i don't think we're going to get close to necessarily exceeding the limitations of this clutch itself the other thing we like about going to a twin disc clutch like this is that the twin disc clutch should be a little bit lighter and it's a bit smaller all the weight is a little bit more towards the center and it should allow this four rotor to be a lot more snappy to get those quick revs that are going to sound super sick and also make this thing a blast to drive. I had initially planned on running Exidy's Hyper Single Disc Clutch, which I think is something very similar to this, but it's just a single disc. It would have been, it would have been just a little bit simpler for the street versus the twin disc, but I noticed something on this twin disc that my OS Gaiken twin disc doesn't have, and that is on this center intermediate plate. One, this center intermediate plate is pretty thick to help dissipate the heat. It's kind of vented like a brake disc would be. But you're going to see these little springs here on this plate. And hopefully that keeps this clutch from rattling. So my OS Gaiken twin disc that I have in the Rad X7, at idle, it sits there and you can hear it rattle. Kind of whenever you switch to a single mass flywheel and like a BMW or something, my old 335 used to rattle at idle. It's just kind of annoying when you're sitting in a drive through and the four-wheeler streetcar is probably going to sit in some drive through So we don't want to be sitting there just clacking away with our twin disc clutch. In addition to, you know, Johnny and his wife are both going to drive this car. So the pedal needs to be something that you don't have to like hit leg day every day for. You can just come straight, skip your morning gym and still drive your car. You don't have to get a good leg pump in. So Pretty stoked to install this. The only thing that's really inconvenient right now about installing this clutch is, well, the engine is in the car and the transmission is in the car because we didn't have the clutch whenever I was putting the engine in. It took a little bit to get this thing. So I've got to drop the transmission out of the FD, which is going to be fun. Might as well just check and make sure that the entire driveline is perfectly good and tight by taking everything else apart on the car aside from just putting the new engine in. So getting this transmission out of the four rotor car is probably going to be just a little bit simpler, but yet a little bit more complex than doing this on a stock FD. On a stock FD, you have the entirety of the engine. The rat's nest is behind here. And I just mentioned the rat's nest. On a stock FD, the intake manifold, all of the vacuum lines, all of the crazy witchcraft that goes on under the intake manifold really hinders your ability to get to these bell housing bolts. So fortunately for us, the intake manifold is off the fabricator getting welded. I can reach the bell housing bolts very easily on this car. In addition, you will need to remove your clutch slave cylinder from the transmission. So under the transmission, you're going to be able to see that. There's two 12 millimeter bolts. You're going to pop that out and let that just hang off to the side. It simply pushes on the pivot bar from the back so that it pulls to disengage the clutch. It's pretty simple. It's almost just like a first gen or an RX-8. It's just the opposite direction of push from the slave cylinder. This car also has what's called a power plant frame, which connects the transmission to the differential. So you're going to have to support your differential, take the power plant frame off, disconnect the drive shaft from the differential, and then we're going to drop the transmission out. Literally, bolt the clutch back on, and then put the transmission and do everything back together. I'm also going to have to, and you're going to see my blood pressure rise a little bit, having to mess with this, because RX-7 FD interiors, it's just like walking through a bunch of that fake movie glass because if you breathe on something the wrong way it just shatters to a million pieces so we've got to pull the shift knob off 
and then this surround right here it should just snap up honestly if we wouldn't have put the hood on this car already i would have probably just pulled the engine to put the clutch in but i've got all of my plumbing already situated you know there's no wiring on it right now so maybe pulling the engine is probably an easier thing to do but because calvin already lined the hood up and i know me trying to lift this out of here i just don't want to risk scratching up the paint on the bottom of the hood and it would honestly probably good to just drop the stuff out of the rear of the car i don't think it's ever been out ever just to check everything over check the u joints we'll look at everything make sure it's all good so let's get to work bench pressing the transmission out of the bottom of this fdr 7 gotta love oh yeah fd stock plastic interior clips bada bing bada boom comes right out i'm not even gonna not even gonna bother unplugging anything we're just gonna set that like that out of the way so i can take this shift boot out of here for 10 millimeters pull the shifter out of the top and then this thing can come right out the bottom get those out of here set that down there this piece should just slide right up and out and if your car has been well maintained you should have some oil up there Little bit of liquids drifting off, dripping off of this thing. Gotta love it. It actually looks pretty clean, so we may not change it. We might just top this thing off once we get done. The only thing that sucks is that diff fluid smells, so we need to get this out of the car because we can't be having this interior smell. Okay. Good thing. Didn't make a mess. That's a win. Don't touch yourself with this drip on my hand because then I'll smell like diff fluid for the rest of the day. Well, I just took the chassis brace off for the back. It's definitely doing something. It's cracked clean in half. Gotta love that. Alright, power plant frame disconnected. Oh yeah. It's like I'm back in structural engineering class looking at all that truss work on there. From here I'm going to leave the drive shaft in the transmission so that no oil comes out of the tail shaft of the transmission. So bell housing bolts, clutch slave cylinder, we'll drop this deal out of here. Whew. Oh, I probably scratched my nice paint up there, didn't I? Okay, let's slide you back a little bit. I think this is going to fit with these headers in here. I sat under the car the wrong way. Back under it from this side, so I'm not going to pinch myself under the trans. Look at that control of the transmission. All right, so now we can access the back of the engine to install this beautiful clutch. So we've got the transmission out, laying on the ground down there on the jack. Time to grab the clutch, the alignment tool, get this thing in there, and get it torqued to spec. So, fortunately, we're tightening everything. Once I bolt the flywheel on loosely, then I can put my flywheel brake on, and we'll be able to torque everything down to Exidy specs in their books for the whole entire deal. There's six bolts that hold the flywheel to the counterbalance on the back of the engine. This engine has effectively an auto counterweight back there as you guys have seen it with the engine out spinning around doing all sorts of cool stuff on the videos that allows us to bolt a universal six bolt flywheel on the counterbalance has been balanced and this whole rotating assembly has been balanced so it's got a bunch of holes drilled in it and all sorts of cool stuff so excited to throw the clutch on i typically just put some blue loctite on there red loctite seems a little bit overkill i've also never had one of these come out all right with the brake installed Kind of do this in like a star pattern. There is six bolts, so you'll do three and then rotate over to three. I've got my torque wrench set to 50 foot-pounds, which ends up being 67.8 newton meters. Mazda's spec, or at least the spec that's in the Exidy book to install, is 54 newton meters to 74 newton meters, so this is around the middle but 50 is the number that i've always used in the past installing a twin disc can definitely be a little bit uh what do i want to say not really intimidating but just a little tough because there's a lot of pieces that have to go up here you know twin disc 
getting it all held in. Definitely should have started with this alignment tool in this thing. What the heck? No way. Lovely. There isn't a pilot bushing in this engine. That's wonderful thing to figure out right about exactly now when I want to put the clutch in. Hopefully I have a pilot bearing here. So we're out from under the car because I just had to go on a crazy adventure today because, you know, in southern Indiana they don't exactly keep pilot bearings for a Mazda RX-7 rotary engine in stock, but if you're Mr. Rad, you do, you just might have forgotten to bring them to your new shop whenever you moved into the new shop. So I had to run back to my parents' house and my brown RX-7 that I moved up here from Tennessee was this little chest of drawers. In the chest of drawers under the pilot bearing section you can see that I've got some throw out bearings in here and luckily we had one rogue pilot bearing. So you have to be pretty careful when you're putting these in or just installing one of these because I've had pilot bearings sent to me in clutch kits that aren't the correct one. So order the right one from Mazda, put it in your car, keep some of them in stock. On my way through town picking up the pilot bearing, I stopped by and the intake manifold is already fabricated and welded up and it looks so good. So got my bungs back here for the brake booster tie-ins. I tried to keep them out of the way so you don't see them when you're just like taking pictures of the engine bay, you know. Obviously if you look down from the back you're gonna see them, but if you're taking this nice three-quarter shot, you're not gonna see them. And look at this, clears the alternator by the skin of our teeth. We got probably a dollar's worth of space in there, which is a huge win. I can shave down some of the alternator too to make some space and there's got to be a little bit of some leftover metal on this aluminum as well that we could create a little bit more space in there if we need it. But, you know, close is not touching, and that's what we need. Pilot bearing, clutch plates, back under the car, putting this very complex but yet simple multi-plate clutch together. Well, you ever, like, knock your camera over midway through bench pressing a transmission and then realize that the footage of the concrete floor is not as cool as... The footage of Mr. Rad strong arming a transmission up into an FDRX7 only for it to like not fit perfect and then having to like scramble and lose my knees and contort my body and run the jack with my foot and then scramble for more bolts and then end up getting the transmission to not fall on my face and then ultimately forgetting to pick the camera up to finish filming the rest of putting the transmission in. I did that. The transmission is in. I had the engine hoist set up simply because. This four rotor is only supported by the rear iron. I know, y'all be like, add a front brace to the engine. We're not taking this thing to the drag strip. We're not taking this thing drifting. We're really not even taking this thing to the road course. I think it's gonna be just fine without the front support. But when you take the trans off, which is what is keeping the engine, you know, transmission is my elbow, engine is my hand. If you take the trans off, the engine's just gonna flop down like this. So I had to support that. Well. Got me in a little conniption while I was under it. Either way, we're all good. So I wanted to verify something because when I was putting the trans in, it was a little tough. It didn't just slide right in. And I know that these dual disc, multi-disc clutches can be a little cantankerous, as Charles would say. It's a great word that's just been stuck in my head since he said it like two months ago. But I wanted to make sure that the clutch worked prior to assembling the rest of the car, putting the exhaust on, getting it on the ground, and then ultimately trying to start it and finding out that like, hey, the clutch is stuck and I can't put it in gear. So we know the discs are all in the right order. Everything was good. I hadn't bled the clutch since I would you know, taken everything apart for the engine bay. So I went ahead and bled the clutch. This is my one-man show way of bleeding the clutch. You take a board, holds the pedal down, operate the bleeder, and you get out from under and then in and out from under the car like 46 times. So I did that, put the shifter on so I could put it in gear. Right now the clutch is depressed, but I don't think I pumped it back up so get my board back in place don't worry not tearing up the seat so once you've got that done 
then you can crawl under here. And if your car has a welded diff, when you turn the wheels, it'll actually, you know, spin the drive shaft. But since this has a limited slip, they spin opposite directions and the drive shaft doesn't turn. So, so you then have to turn on your rock climbing strong hand grip that hand tightens bolts too tight and spin the uh, drive shaft. So the nice thing about doing this is that I can verify that the clutch in fact does disengage, which is a huge win because now I can, you know, jack the trans up, power plant frame on, flip the diff up and put this together. And my one hour supposed to change clutch job turned into a six hour drive across town to find a pilot bearing and pick up the intake, do a whole bunch of other stuff, come back, fight the transmission for approximately really long and really struggling under here on my back and then uh now we're here so i'm gonna button this up the clutch is gonna be done we're gonna take a real good look at this super nice intake manifold that got welded again and uh also hang the exhaust under here while we're under here which will be we'll just we're just knocking stuff out that's what we got we got five days to deal this gap and i still haven't even mounted the ecu in this deal so i'm gonna quit yapping and i guess keep bench pressing it's only fitting what's that there's a bodybuilder guy that does the app does the microphone there's a bodybuilder guy that does the microphone thing like me you could just call me that guy just down here one of these days i'll just be able to do a push-up lift the whole rx7 off the ground definitely there we go okay so we're on the diff first nut so this doesn't fall off in the face what do they call a sweatshirt at the gym your pump cover. Ooh, push this up here. Put a nut on that deal. And now the power plant frame is affixed and in position. All right, so I made a mess, but not with anything that you haven't already seen or me talk about in the car that I've already done this evening. My words are getting a little weird because it's like very early in the morning, but check out the exhaust. I love that it's just not that really dumb five inch ginormous fart can looking thing sticking out of the back of this FD anymore. Nicely well understated simple yet effective three and a half inch dolphin tip. Under here we've got the muffler, the three and a half, the resonator, the collectors, the whole deal. It does suck that the exhaust is a little bit low not really like excessively low, but I wish I could get that resonator up in there just a little higher. There's a little bit of room, honestly, and I bet if I had a different hanger, I could probably get it up. But really, nothing hangs lower than the actual bottom of the collector up there. So, and I'm not rebuilding all of the headers before it deals gap. So we're going to roll with this exhaust and see how everything shakes out. If it gets scraped up, nicked up, destroyed up, the whole deal, then we'll reconfigure everything down the road. But for now, this is what we're gonna run with. The intakes, this looks sick. I said at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna say it again at the end. I'm so stoked with how this engine bay looks. It's simple, yet effective, you know? Another thing that just drives me up the wall is my heater running in the back of the video. Perfect, nice and quiet. Where were we? The other thing that drives up the wall? Okay, Haltech coils. Sticker, this way. Sticker, this way. What are you doing? Was this like a Monday morning coil or a Friday coil? And then I was checking all the rest of them and there is zero consistency between the coils. It's not like I had one that's backwards. It's like there, I've got three one way and three the other way, which is just horribly unfortunate because I'm gonna have to now find another one that matches so that I can put all of these in the same direction. So I need four, ideally the two new ones I get, you know, I should have four that face the same way. These are the FuelTech IGN1As, they're the exact same coil, just got the FuelTech thing, but hey, their logo matches. Same direction, both coils. Like I'm to the point that this bothers me enough that I will raid the coils from my RX-7 the red one, so that the top four coils of this go the same way. Like, we can't be having this whole not symmetry in here. It, it's not, it's not working. Not working for me. So anyways, among other things, 
one thing that's interesting is like the slides. There's not really like an exceptionally large amount of resistance in this. You know, once there's a return spring, it's it should work. But dang, is this going to be a heavy throttle pedal. Like, it's just going to be kind of hard to push, I think. I'm going to have to have a serious spring to return this. But we'll manage. It is cool to, you know, brap, 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 brap. And then win in here. And Herb, the guy who welded this for me, actually hammered down and smoothed out the insides of this, which is something I was going to do, but I'm super appreciative that he took care of that. So the runner transitions, you know, the slide throttle trumpet is just a little bit bigger than the barrel of the slide, and then from the barrel of the slide, it necks down a little bit into the actual runner itself. So probably not the most optimal flow state through there, but, you know... It'll be plenty for 400 horsepower. Look at all just the horsepower capability right here. Just serious airflow. I don't have it all the way bolted on, so ignore the fact that it's shaky, but serious airflow. So pretty stoked with how that all laid out. I got in here, and I've installed the JP3 Motorsports battery relocation setup that actually mounts this fuse block. Very nice piece. Very happy with how that was installed. In addition to, so I'm alluding to my mess that I just showed you at the beginning, the JP3 Motorsports anti-gravity battery mount back here with the big breaker. So I haven't started running any of the wires yet, which is what I get to start on basically next. I pretty much have everything figured out. So I want to really give a shout out to my buddy Jacob and to my buddy Josh. Josh helped me set up the base map, or I say helped me, he basically just did it. And then Jacob has been helping me science out the wiring stuff. So a few of the interesting things that I can, you know, touch on in this video until, so basically this is the end of the video, where we've installed the clutch, we changed the transmission, the intake is back, woo woo, but let's look forward to the next video, right? Wiring is going to be super fun, and I've figured out you know, running eight IGN 1A coils that the Nexus R3, I've only got four high current outputs, which are the like solid state PDM like stuff you can use, which there's half bridge outputs and other things I can use to turn stuff on to output 12 volts without needing a fuse or relay or whatever. And I've probably lost all of you guys who watch the videos and you're like, eh, wiring, whatever. It's not my thing. Probably not going to rewire my whole car. But anyways, it's good information. So I'm going to have to set up some relays to power the coils because they are just simply an on off. So the PDMs like pull up speed, voltage, current regulation stuff isn't really necessary to just turn eight coils on. So I want to put relays on it for that, which is okay. We'll use one of the outputs on the Nexus to turn them on when the ignition turns the Nexus on perfectly fine. But the cool thing is we're still going to utilize all of the Nexus's PDM PDM stuff for the other four other functions in the car. So fuel pump, there'll be one for that. Injectors will still be on the Nexus PDM. Fans and other fan will be on the other two. So we'll be able to like bring one fan on, then bring the second fan on. Or if in the future we upgrade to two speed fans, then we'll be able to bring one span span fan speed on and then bring another one on. The air conditioning is going to talk to the Nexus, so when the AC compressor gets turned on, the Nexus will kick the fans on. So like, you know, doing all that sort of factory like integration is going to be very fun to sort out. And that's what I've been working on. The mess that I made, though, is this. And I know Johnny watches all the videos and I know Johnny bought this. But this is the uh, the engine harness from the FD and I need some of this. So all of the transmission wiring that runs through the body harness comes out into the engine harness to do your reverse lights. I don't think there's a neutral safety switch, your speedometer, that sort of thing. Your temperature gauge in the dash actually runs through your engine harness. The oil pressure gauge is on the chassis side. So there's actually two separate ones. This is the engine one. That's your temperature plug-in. So I'm going to 
I'm actually not going to take the temperature wire all the way out because it's only one wire, so I'll just extend it and run it where I want. But I'm going to take the temperature wire out of where it goes into the body harness side. So the mess I made was I am cutting up and taking some stuff out of this harness. I feel like because of how malleable this is that when Johnny put the engine in this car and had this car fixed up, um, that this was a brand new harness like three years ago. But hey, you know, better for us to use a brand new transmission harness than to hack something together out of an old harness that then becomes a nightmare and a mess. So I'm going to make a mess of this harness and you can still buy them new. So sorry, not sorry. But that's going to be the end of the video, basically, till I find something else random to ramble about. But uh, we'll go over all of the sensors. We'll go over pretty much all the wiring in the next video. And I'll make that video pretty detailed as far as showing you, like, these are the Nexus things. These are where you're integrating into the car. This is what's communicating to what. And there'll probably be another video that's going to be, like, setting up the base map and eventually starting the car. So mechanically starters in it's ready to fire up wiring wise not ready to fire up so i've got all the supplies here got all my wires we got the battery we got the o2 sensors we got all the sensors we need we got i think we got everything pretty sure pretty sure so now begins the very fun part which is cooking up all the copper so wish me luck guys but for now i'm gonna go get some rest it's the wee hours of the morning the transmission took way too long it just it just took way too long it should have been an easy job it wasn't that's the way of the world we're lucky the exhaust is on i wiped everything down so it should turn a nice gold eventually with no fingerprints in it but that's gonna be the end of the video and i'm gonna make like a shepherd and leave at 238 0238 so get fired up for that it's cold now and i don't i don't know what this winter thing's about it's like it's almost eight it is april right it's april it needs to get warm it needs to get warm so with that thank you guys so much for watching love that you guys are enjoying the videos like i said trying to crank as many of them out as i possibly can this week just get all this stuff done and uh hopefully We'll see you at Deals Gap, and this thing's going to make some noise very soon. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Keep it rad. You know, there's, there's been a lot of like, oh, I'm so sorry I ruined this really nice FD video content, me saying that. But then you see this image right here, and like, it's beautiful. It could be more billet sexy with all sorts of front drive stuff, but honestly, like the fact that the intake looks sick, the coils look good, everything's just so simple. It's so simple yet insane. It's crazy. Because basically, this is your, you know, there's going to be a coil harness laying in here. An injector and sensor harness lane over there they're probably going to run separately i'm not going to have wires crossing all of this you know the coil wires will come over and then come down injector wires will go down under that and then come over here coil pressure fuel pressure I'm trying to keep everything parallel we want it all when you look in here it's not messy and you can still see the engine that's the goal Peace, guys.